first round of the NFL draft is in the books. And today I want to talk to you about the top prospects to go in round two tonight. So I'm going to give you the top 12 players on my board, and I'm going to tell you where I think they would be a great fit. So number one is cornerback Andrew Booth Jr. out of Clemson, who came into the draft the number 15 ranked player on my big board. Andrew Booth fell out of the first round, which I thought might happen over some injury concerns, which we will get to in a moment. But looking at his play on the field, it was phenomenal during the 2021 season for Clemson. He get played the most snaps in the ACC among cornerbacks without giving up a 20 plus yard reception. He's a guy who likes to play off coverage and keep his eyes in the backfield. Half turn techniques, you're going to see a lot from him. Uh, so he could fit with a team that runs a cover three scheme, some sort of off coverage uh, type of schemes. Even though he plays off the line of scrimmage, though, he's very good in the running game. He triggers downhill quickly. He's a good tackler and he hits hard when he arrives. Booth Jr. is a highly aggressive corner who does not give up explosive plays. And he does make highlight reel plays, as you're seeing here with interceptions, pass breakups, you name it, he can do it all. Now, there are concerns medically for him. Going back to high school, he had tendonitis. He's had a patella injury. He's had numerous other injuries. He's coming off of a sports hernia surgery. So while he has not missed many games at the collegiate level, the fact that he's played through so many injuries at such a young age could be concerning to the next level. But in the second round, I think he's a great value. I could see him coming off the board at 34 to the Minnesota Vikings, a team that really wants to improve their cornerback situation. And I think he would be a great fit there. At number two, I have Malik Willis, the quarterback out of Liberty, who was number 20 on my board coming into the draft. Of the quarterbacks in the draft, I believe Malik Willis has the highest ceiling. He has elite athleticism. He makes uh, jaw-dropping throws with his big NFL arm, but he does struggle with touch with layering throws over the middle of the field. He's erratic at times in the pocket, and he does take a lot of sacks. And a lot of it stems from his inconsistencies in decision-making and in his processing ability. He throws a lot of interceptable passes, takes a lot of sacks, that's a lot of negative plays. But day one, when he steps into the NFL, he will be the second best running quarterback behind only Lamar Jackson. He needs time to develop, but I think he's got tremendous upside. He is worth a swing here at the top of the second round, and I think a fantastic fit for him would be the New York Giants. The Giants just declined Daniel Jones' fifth-year option, which means he is on the final year of his rookie contract, and they brought in QB guru uh, Brian Dable, who, if you'll remember, worked with another small school quarterback Maybe you've heard of him, Josh Allen. So I love the fit there with the Giants. I think it would be a fantastic pick for them at pick 36 in the top of the second round. At number three, I have Jaquan Brisker, the safety out of Penn State, who came into the draft number 23 on my big board. Jaquan Brisker turned in a 9.14 relative athletic score. This is an explosive athlete, uh, really good agility. He doesn't have necessarily elite straight line speed, but he stops and starts quickly, which is something that's very important at the safety position. He's extremely versatile. At Penn State, he was used as a single high safety. They put him in the box. They put him in the slot. He can really do anything for you at the next level, although I don't think single high is going to be his best usage. I think you're going to want this guy uh, in split field safety looks. I think you can drop him into the slot a lot. He's excellent in the run game, which is why being a slot defender is so good for him. Even dropping him into the box, he fits his run gap responsibilities uh, and he deconstructs blocks really well. I think a great fit for him would be Tampa Bay at 33, the first pick of the second round. He'd be a great fit alongside Antoine Winfield Jr. and would really shore up that secondary who did lose some cornerbacks so it could help out on the back end of that defense. At number four, I have edge rusher David Ajabo out of Michigan, who came into the draft number 24 on my big board. Ajabo was my edge two in this class behind Kevon Thibodeau prior to his injury, which we'll talk about in just a minute. He had a 9.4 relative athletic score. Um, he didn't play football until his junior year of high school, and then he was a one-year starter with Michigan. And in that one year, he excelled. He had 11 sacks, 12 tackles for loss, but he did have Aiden Hutchinson, who went number two overall on the other side to draw some of that attention away. And so we'll see how he's able to do when he's not, you know, playing next to a number two overall pick. 
This guy is extremely fast. He's got a quick get off the snap. He gets tons of speed and he loves to just outrun offensive tackles or if they set wide enough, he loves to spin back inside with an inside spin move. In the run game, he's somewhat of a liability. He really struggles to deconstruct blocks. And so that's something to watch out for. This guy has all the physical traits that you could ever ask for from an edge. However, he does lack experience and he lacks refinement. And now he's going to miss all of the off season and a portion of the year with an injury. So that's gonna hurt him. It's gonna set back his development. I think a good fit for him would be number 43 overall to the Atlanta Falcons. This is a team that's not ready to compete right now. And so the fact that he can't play at the beginning of this season shouldn't factor in here. Why not take a swing on a guy that would have possibly been a top 15 pick in the second round when you're not really playing for contention this year anyway. So I would love a fit of him to the Atlanta Falcons at 43. The number five guy on my board is Nicobe Dean, the linebacker out of Georgia. He was number 25 on my big board. He fell out of the first round. Uh, Dean is a, has great range in the passing game. He can cover anybody and he's got a quick trigger downfield in the running game. So quick processor, elite athleticism. He's a really good blitzer. He totaled 23 pressures to go along with his six sacks at Georgia last year. And then in space, he's a good tackler, which is always going to be important for your linebackers. The biggest issue for Dean and why he fell out of the first round is his size. He is undersized. And I think there's concerns about him being able to cover tight ends at the next level and being a liability in the run game. Now at Georgia, that wasn't the case, but he played behind an elite Georgia defensive line that saw, you know, Trevon Walker go number one overall, Jordan Davis at 13, DeMarvin, or not DeMarvin Leal, um, Devontae Wyatt. All three of these guys going in the first round. Quay Walker also went in the first round. So he played with a stacked front seven that was able to keep him clean in the run game. That's likely not going to happen at the next level. So it, his projection and run defense is questionable. I think he would be a great fit at 47 overall to the Washington Commanders. Their first round pick a year ago, Jamin Davis, was a disaster. They have a really good defensive line, and so they could help mitigate some of those size concerns for Nicobe Dean and just let him roam around and make plays. So I think that'd be a great fit for the Commanders at 47 if he falls that far. The number six player left on my big board is wide receiver George Pickens out of Georgia, who comes in at 26 overall on my big board. He had a 9.37 relative athletic score. Uh, this guy's a really good athlete. He's a big bodied X receiver, but he can sink his hips and he can make breaks in a way that you don't typically see from an X receiver. He's got great body control. He's got great start and stop ability. Now, he, he's a little soft at the catch point at times. He's not necessarily a contested catch guy, but he is a guy who can win off of press coverage. He's a guy who can get open that you can bounce your quarterback to on the backside of progressions. Uh, he makes some really good plays and he's good after the catch. And so I think he would be a great selection here. I had him as my wide receiver five overall, and he would be the seventh receiver coming off of the board here. So one concern with him is he is coming off of an ACL tear in 2020. It limited him to four games in 2021. But as long as the medicals check out, I think this guy, without that injury, I think he could have been in conversation for wide receiver one. I think he's a perfect fit at 37 overall to the Chicago Bears, who desperately need a target for Justin Fields uh, so they don't hamstring Fields' development. So I like Pickens to the Bears at 37. My number seven player is quarterback Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati. He was the 33rd overall player on my big board. Ritter has a 9.61 relative athletic score, so you can see his, his measurables are really good. He is the most accurate quarterback in the class, both throwing beyond his first read and throwing into tight windows. He, however, he was second in the class in interceptable pass rate behind only Malik Willis. So although he is accurate downfield when he's in inaccurate, he's really inaccurate and he can tend to put the ball in danger. The biggest strength of him, he excels throwing the ball downfield and he's a guy who hunts explosive plays. He played in a pro style offense at Cincinnati. And I think he's a good fit to a vertical oriented offense in the NFL. He's, he's pro ready. I think he can come in and have a moderate ceiling year one. And I think he can get better as you're able to dial back that aggressiveness uh, and, and work on some accuracy issues. I think there's a lot of teams he could fit with. 
Seattle at 40 or 41 needs a quarterback. The Falcons at 43 could use a quarterback. The Lions at 46. Uh, So those are some places to keep an eye on for Desmond Ritter. At number eight, I have safety Jalen Petrie out of Baylor. He was the number 36 player on my big board. He has an 8.47 relative athletic score. He has a lot of versatility at Baylor. He played safety. He played inside linebacker, outside linebacker. They used him in the slot. He has an extremely high football IQ. He handled moving around those different positions really well. And he is a solid tackler and a very hard hitter. He's got great range in the running game, but that range doesn't necessarily show up in the passing game as much. So maybe he can work on that read and react time there. I don't think he's ready to be a single high safety in the NFL, but I think he could develop into one. But for now, those split field looks, moving him around, I think he would be a great piece. I would really like him in the Jets at 38. They could bolster their secondary behind Sauce Gardner by adding a versatile piece to help boost that Robert Sala defense. At number nine, I have interior defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal out of Texas A&M University. He was 37th overall on my big board. Uh, Leal has a quick first step and he's got good agility. Um, He rushed inside and outside at Texas A&M, but he was much more consistent and explosive rushing from the interior. Now, the problem is he's sort of a tweener type player. He doesn't have the speed to be an outside rusher, and I don't know if he has the size to play inside. He was in the fifth percentile for weight uh, for defensive tackles. He's a technician with his hand counters, uh, but he can struggle or he can power rush, but he struggles to translate that power into anchoring in the run game. He's inconsistent deconstructing blocks uh, and eating double teams. And so if a team has a good plan of how to utilize this guy, he could be a good player, but he is a little bit of a tweener here. I really like the fit to the Cleveland Browns at 44. They already have a superior outside rusher, an elite guy in Miles Garrett. And then you have DeMarvin Leal, who's not going to be double teamed inside because that extra attention is going to go to Garrett. And I think it could allow him to wreak havoc and sort of help out that pass rush. At number 10, I have offensive tackle Bernard Raymond out of Central Michigan University. He's the number 38 player on my big board. He has a 9.87 relative athletic score. He He's an elite athlete. He actually went to Central Michigan as a 230 pound tight end and after two seasons transitioned to offensive tackle. And he put on 75 pounds in the process of transitioning. In his final six college games, he allowed zero pressures. So he's got great athleticism, great lateral mobility. He's really good at running edge defenders around the horn but he has raw technique. He doesn't land his punch as well. Sometimes he lets rushers get into his chest, which causes problems. Uh, his functional strength is a concern and, and his age at 24, only having two years of the position. This is a guy who needs development. Like overall, his tape is impressive for a guy who only played the position for two years, but he is going to need to develop. I really like him to the Jets at 38 with the Makaya Becton saga that's going on. That's a wild card. It would be smart to grab an insurance policy that if Becton works out, you can develop Raymond. And if Becton is gone, you can throw Raymond out there this year, although it could be a little rough initially. My number 11 guy is interior defensive lineman Perion Winfrey out of Oklahoma. He was the number 41 player on my big board. At the University of Oklahoma, he played anywhere from the zero tech to the five tech. They moved him all around. He has a quick first step that he turns into gap penetration and disruption. Winning off of that first step is key for his game. He can get upfield quickly. Uh, He can move laterally to string out plays that go wide. I think he's a good run defender unless he's double teamed, but then he struggles to anchor because he can't translate that first step into a win. One of the biggest criticisms of him was a lack of gap integrity in the run game, but I just don't think that's a fair assessment based on how much he was asked to stunt and twist. Um, I think he's fine in that regard, and I like him to the Chicago Bears at 39. I know I already mentioned George Pickens. I think Winfrey is another guy that could be great for them to run as a three-tech uh, in their defensive scheme. And finally, rounding out this video, the number 12 guy on my big board is running back Brees Hall out of Iowa State. He is the number 42 player on my big board. He has a 9.96 relative athletic score, so he is an elite athlete at the running back position. He's got good patience and vision. He's a perfect scheme fit for a zone running team. 
Uh, he's a natural receiver with the ball in his hands, and he's really good in pass protection as well. So he is a three down back at the NFL level on day one. He's going to step in and make an impact for a team. Uh, he does have a little bit of ball security issues. He doesn't keep the ball locked inside his frame. That's one thing he can work on. The other negative on Hall is that he has 800 plus career touches in college. And so you do have to wonder how much tread he's going to have left on the tires. But I love the fit of him going to the Buffalo Bills at 57 overall. The Bills running game was abysmal last year until they started using Josh Allen a ton to run the ball. That's not something you want to do all year. I think Brees Hall could step in. He would be a weapon out of the backfield. He would boost the Bills running game. And I would love that fit overall for a team that's trying to get over the hump to a AFC championship. That's going to wrap it up for this video. That is my top 12 guys remaining as we head into day two. Be sure and join us tonight for our day two live stream. It'll go live at seven Eastern time tonight as the first pick goes on the clock.